Hi guys, uh, welcome to the OLED Wave paper reading channel. We are a channel that's focusing on speech and NLP paper reading. And uh, please uh, recommend your our channel to your friends and also subscribe our channel and hit the, the bell. And I wanna say happy Diwali to my Indian friends. I know there are lots of Indian subscribers and uh, I really appreciate your support. Uh, please continue to subscribe to my channel and I will uh, deliver the best uh, paper reading videos to you as I could. Okay. If I, this is working or not. Okay. Well, today we're going to be sharing a paper uh, which is literally uh, being put on to the archive. Its name is Robust Speech Recognition VI Large Scale Weak Supervision. Um, but they, this is done by people from OpenAI. And indeed, they call their uh, ASR model or speech to translation model whisper, whisper, okay. So before I jump into the paper, uh, let me share with you the fundamentals uh, in the large scale speech recognition. I think about two years ago, or maybe three years ago, um, researchers from Facebook first uh, uh, worked out something called the Wave 2 Vac 2.0. This is a self supervised training, which means that it's very similar to the concept of BERT. You first uh, train a model unsupervisedly uh, with a, a gazillion amount of uh, hours of uh, audio. Then for the each specific task, downstreaming task, for example, ASR task, uh, speaker verification task, uh, emotion recognition task, you fine tune or do the fine tune on each different tasks, okay? This is the concept of uh, Pre-trained model plus the fine tune. And if you're interested, uh, the Wave 2 Black 2.0 and the Hubert and also Wave 2 LM paper, uh, I all have these paper readings in, in, in our YouTube channel. And the, the second uh, trend is that uh, people get lots of data, um, but transcribed or they perform supervised training. Um, uh, it, regarding the supervisor training, there can be two directions. First, you can be a very specific, for example, as maybe all of you have known that uh, people have uh, uh, do really well lately on the Libre Speech data set. Uh, Libre Speech, I think the latest number, if you're just talking about a supervisor training and uh, your training set is just to focus on the Libre speech per se, okay? Only 960 hours of data. Um, I think lately the ASAPP company, the company called a ASAP, they can push the lower bound of the WR below 2%. It's about 1.8. Um, but this is does not use any uh, pre-trained model or self-supervised trained model. It only uses the Libre speech data and uh, very focused on the Libre speech task, and they get really good numbers. Uh, the other direction, I think lately, I think last year, last year, uh, William Chen, a researcher I respect very much, he composed a lot of labeled database, but it's a high quality labeled database. For example, Libre speech is a labeled database, okay? Uh, but also a sweet board, a Fisher, um, Etc. Uh, they have this database. Uh, they grouped all of them together. I think eventually they come up with about six thousands of hours of high quality data, high quality transcribed data. Okay, uh, this is English, and they, they they run ASR on top of this. Okay, but the result is not very satisfying. Um, so this work, this work. Uh, robust speech recognition via task, via large scale weak supervision can be reviewed as 
the second track of the supervisor training, or maybe a third track, okay? Because it leverages way more data than the speech do or uh, William Chen's work, which was only about 6,000 hours, but this guy did come up with 680,000 hours of week, weekly transcribe the speech database, okay? It has the labels, but most of the time the labels are not coming from human transcription. Why do I say that? Um, because the authors mentioned that uh, they crawled the data from the internet. Uh, whenever they find some audio and the corresponding text to it, they just try to consider this as, okay, this is the speech and this is the transcription or the, or the translation. And they try to align these two together or combine these two together with some alignment. And you can see how weak this is, okay? But they do have a, a very uh, sophisticated uh, data cleaning or error checking scheme so they can filter out those audio and the text pair, which doesn't make sense, okay? So this is how they come up with this uh, super large database, but it has some transcription, okay? Other than the wave 2 back or Hubert, which does not use any transcription at all when training the, the large model. Um, this is the reason why I think I finished this introduction part. Um, I think I would have uh, directly jumped onto the model part, okay? Okay, they, the, the model they are using is actually, uh, uh, if suppose you are speech people, you call this the model called attention based encoder decoder. So if you read speech paper, you will see people talk a lot about the AED. So this is the AED model. Or uh, people from Google, they tend to call this LAS. I have a paper reading on the paper LAS. Or you can call that AED, it's up to you, okay. And you can see that uh, the, the encoder and the decoder, they're all transformers, okay? Transformer. I also have a paper reading on the transformer. Just search, I think you have to search attention is all you need other than transformer in my channel so, so you get all these paper reading um, recordings out there, especially from uh, the perspective of a speech researcher other than the NLP researcher. Um, so it's very straightforward. Um, the only thing different than training uh, ASR model uh, or ASR AED model, okay, is that the input is always speech. For example, you can see that, uh, take this, for example, you can see that this is the input. This is the input, sorry. This is the input, okay, the input or no speech input. But the output could be different because uh, when they crawl the data, they also include the, the translation scenario into their database. What does that mean? It means, suppose, I think, what is this? This is Spanish, All right? So the, the, the speech is Spanish, but the text is English. It is the translation version of the transcription, okay? Uh, for the people who are online, I think the Zoom might be running out in 10 minutes, but uh, if you're interested, you can keep watching so you can uh, you, you, you can wait till tomorrow. I will upload the video onto the YouTube you, so you can see the full recording. So our channel is OLED Wave YouTube channel, okay? This is, this is OLED Wave. Let's just search OLED Wave on the YouTube, okay? You will find our uh, this recording, okay. And the third thing is, uh, you can have uh, the speech 
to the text with the same language, but it's not English at all, right? So this is how why, besides the 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 audio input here, audio is always get input into the encoder, and uh, they got the attention. Uh, sorry, the encoder embedding got input into it here, but here when you uh, wanna fed everything into the or feed everything into the decoder this encoder this decoder so you have this uh, encoding block right here see um, this is where you put the labels okay SOT means the start of the sentence okay and EN means the input language what 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 do you, what does that mean you may ask Uh, it means, for instance, this one is EN, right? But this one is not EN. It's maybe Spanish, SP. And this is not English. This is Korean, okay, KO. And this is nothing, okay. Nothing can be also e EN, it's fine. Uh, this is the audio's language, okay. Language of the audio, okay language of the audio so how do they do this so they do use a lots of um, uh, heuristic ways of to uh, deduct deduce the possible language of the audio for instance they can first train a pre-train a model of the language id okay they put the audio in it and get a language label because the recording is relatively long. Most of it is uh, over 30 seconds or 30 seconds. So the language IDs label is fairly reliable, I would say. Or sometimes they use some uh, metadata to decide what the language of the audio should be. Okay. And then the next thing would be, um, this is uh, a zero, one, uh, how do you say that? Zero, one flag. So this one is what? This is one is a transcription, right? But this one is translation. This is a transcribe, right? And this what? This is also transcribe, right? Doesn't do translation. This one could be transcribed, right? It's trivial. So they have also the label right here, okay? So this is why when you output everything, you have this, this label. Um, I think I'm not very certain about what it does a zero does zero mean. Um, correct me if I were wrong. Okay, I think this is the VAD label or the start of the time timing begin time or something. Okay. So you see that the model is very straightforward if you are familiar with the transformer. Okay. The only thing different is that they have this uh, the language label there and the, the transcribe or transcription flag o over there, okay? And why, you, you may say, why they, they're doing this and the, the same thing here? Uh, because this is, uh, they're they using a auto-regressive, they're using auto-regressive, regressive, they're using an auto-regressive decoder, so, Whenever you have an output, it will be fed into the decoder's uh, input so to combine with the next round of the encoder embedding and annotation stuff to get the next output label. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I have come up with done with the model. Um, they they come up with a very large model, I would say, because if you just check the largest model they get. Uh, they have 32 layers, but uh, if you look at the number of layers, um, it's roughly the at the magnitude of pre-trained model. I think most of the pre-trained model, they have 24 to 30, 36 layers, I think, maybe 48 um, at the same range, okay? The width, uh, width usually is about 1,000, okay, 1,000 so, this is fine. This is fine. But they do have a way more heads 
than the pre-trained model. Usually the pre-trained model have 16, but they have more than 16. So in the, in the end, they come up with more parameters than the web 2 vec model large or something like this. This is actually, I think, 1.5 billion parameters. Uh, but if you check the, one of the paper I have read, just search the keyword the big SSL um, from Google. I have a reading paper reading on this, just to search the keyword. I think, according to my memory, if I were not wrong, they have a model which has 8 billion parameters. So this is not that big. But the big SSL does use a pre-trained model. So I would say um, the Whisper model mentioned in this work is probably the largest uh, supervisedly trained model nowadays up to 2022 november the first okay okay and let's jump to the experiment right they're, they're talking about this is called a zero shot evaluation they're supposed to do this okay uh then this means that there's no fine-tuned stage so you have they have a very large model, but suppose you have a tiny amount of a several utterance or several hours of the target domain data, you can run the fine tune on it. But this work doesn't do this. The evaluation metric, I think they use the WER. They they nagged something about WER, but I think they are using WER most of the time, so it's not important. Uh, they first come look at the English speech recognition, but but uh, the thing is, uh, if you're doing the speech recognition research, uh, you can skip this because um, um, I think that the lack of apple to apple comparison, um, and the, uh, I I read the the analysis. I think I I do have I I do appreciate or I do think they have done some work in it. They made some efforts. Um, but I, I I cannot agree with most of the uh, comments out there because uh, because you can see they ask questions and make conclusions, but they are the con conclusions are mostly lack of supporting proofs. Uh, when I mention about proofs, I would like to see uh, for example, ablation study with a detailed analysis um, and also. Numbers. I want to see numbers other than this you know, these type of uh, mind uh, mind games or or guessing. You know, we're not a Albert Einstein. Think uh, we we cannot do the theoretical physics stuff. So uh, speech people are usually very uh, experimental oriented. So we only trust the numbers and we deduct our conclusions from the numbers. Okay. Um, this is, uh, I think, is very. I don't think that you can draw a line from this. This is, I don't think so, right? Um, you cannot draw a line. This, and also, I think this table might be interesting to you. Um, they compare their work with the Wave Two Pack Two Point Zero uh, model uh, with a fine-tuned ASR uh, on the libre speech, which is unfair. Uh, you can pause the video for 10 seconds and see if you can uh, understand this and uh, see why this is not fair okay okay um the reason that's not fair was because or is because the whisper model can be regarded as a general generic model it is, it is supposed to be a toolbox which can handle every uh, can handle every case. For example, libre speech is a red speech, Ted Lim is a tech talk, right? WSJ is newspaper reading, and uh, switchboard is telephony conversation. Package. So you can see the numbers are not very good but it's okay but 
This model is a ASM model, which uses the pre-trained model and fine-tuned on the library speed training set. So it's fine-tuned on this, this, this set. So you can see it's already it's a domain-specific model, or it's supposed to just handle the library speech or, or the textbook or audiobook reading uh, scenario. It, you cannot blame the web back a large 960 hour model because they try to see if they can have a lower band of word error rate on libre speech by leveraging the pre-trained model. There's nothing wrong with this, but it's wrong to use this model to tackle other tasks, right? Especially the switchboard. You see, it sucks. But I, I think I do have seen that people, um, they use the, the Wave2Vac pre-trained model, they fine-tune on the switchboard task. They get way better results than this, probably less than 7%, right? Um, I think the reason why this model was very much or significant, very, very significantly better than the Wave 2 back 2.0 large 960 hour model was this. This is a generic model or general model. This is a domain, domain specific model, okay? It's not okay to compare these two models together. Okay. Um, Multilingual speech recognition. Uh, I think you might want to take a look at this database. I think released by Facebook a few, two years ago. Um, they compare. So I think I also have <laughs> a paper reading of the XSLR. XSLR. You can search this in our channel. I think it's 53 languages. They're, they're, again, I think they're comparing, they're doing the same thing as about, right? okay? They're claiming they have a better results on, than, than on, on something, okay? But this time, I think it's not, um, it's, it's not, this is also gener, gener, generic model. This is also generic model. Uh, but this is, a, okay, you cannot compare left to right, okay? No. We compare this row first. Um, XSR is something I'm familiar with. But I'm very really sorry that I'm not familiar with this. This is a new paper. I need to read this. M Slam. Maybe you can search this in our channel. By the time you search, I may already have the video. Okay. But look at this. Uh, their model is better than this. I think one reason could be um, they have way more data than the XSR. XSR is only probably not more than 600k hours, probably just a thousand K at most. Yeah, that's amount of data. And this one, they get worse results. So I attribute this to fine tune issues, right? Okay, this is a, this is a second, something I want to stress in, in this video. Um, you, may, you may see this already, okay, or I have been seeing this for the late two years. Um, researchers, especially researchers from NLP, they're trying to tackle the speech recognition problem by leveraging the method they borrowed from the BERT. Okay, they're saying that okay, we can do this. Uh, as as long as I train a pre-trained model, uh, then I'm done. Okay, because I can just uh, use uh, whatever uh, domain-specific data to fine-tune the pre-trained model, and then I got what I need. But it's not exactly the right thing because uh, if you if you check the something called the uh, Wall Street Journal, Wall Street Journal database, paper reading database, I think the whole database I think I used that maybe fifteen years ago. It has only eighty hours of data, but this is very highly quality high quality transcribed data. And then. With this amount of data by itself, even you you, you are not using the state of our system. Uh, suppose you're using the HMM. I call it HMM for you to understand, but it's actually a modular system. Okay, uh, it's our 
let's call that this is uh, like uh, the, the technology is 10 years old, okay? 10 years old. And you can still easily, easily achieve 3% 3, 3 WER, which is the result they're achieving with this uh, a gazillion amount of data, okay? You can see this. And uh, suppose you're not doing the fine tune correctly, your result will be screwed. Okay. So I wouldn't say that the pre model or the generic model is not the way to go, but I would just say it, we're not there yet. Uh, I think right now, up to now, today, uh, if you want to do speech recognition or research, or if you want to build a practical system, uh, you have to think about the customization or fine tune with the exact uh, correct data and the, do careful um, validation experiments so to prevent your model from overfitting because you can see that you can very easily get very worse results okay translation i'm not expert on translation but i just want to um, go over this, okay. Uh, I would say they're doing fairly well uh, in terms of the speech to text translation, okay, compared to the previous published results. Here. They're lifting this by another 10%, I think. Okay, language ID performance. This is surprising to me uh, because I think. It's worse than I thought okay, because you can see the language ID is actually worse than two thirds. They're 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 making errors one third of the time. Okay, which means that if you look at the model out out there, it means that the language ID they obtained. Or deducted from the audio may not be very accurate. It contains up at least about thirty percent or even forty percent of error, and they can still train the model. So this 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 is the reason why I think the author should should have done some more detailed in detailed analysis about the language ID error. So the question I would ask is, what is the exact language ID error you got? Um, on the training set, and also, uh, how does that affect this? This uh, language ID errors affect your acoustic model or ASR model training. Okay, go back to this. Okay, I think this is uh, very interesting. Uh, they are testing some mismatched mismatch cases. Uh, this one is that um, they add noise onto the test set. Uh, they can either add uh, the white noise, you know, white noise like uh, white noise is like uh, there's, there's there's no white noise in the in the in the world. Okay, um, I would say AC noise is very likely. White noise, but it's more like uh, strengthened on the low frequency. Um, I think the radio noise might like if you turn on the radio, you didn't find any station. The the noise is more like white noise, the, the noise you heard. And the pop noise, pop noise is uh, more like a uh, babble noise. It's more like babble. It's more like babble noise. But it's uh, way worse than babble noise. Okay, babble means that uh, you heard somebody's talking. But you cannot tell what he's speaking. That's called babble noise. All right. So the test set is now focused on just the test clean, and you can see that. And there again, they they picked the wave two vac fine tuned model. But this time it's domain specific model. They are doing the right thing. That's fine. And they are saying that uh, most of the time, I think their model is in the middle. If you agree with me, okay. Because this is very worse, not doing good at all. Because this is only using a hundred hours data to transcribe data to do the fine tune. 
but once you use a more data to fine tune, you can see. I th I think the deeper speech task um, they're getting roughly the same results. Um, but if you check the S two T tasks, see there these these ones are actually doing better than the whisper model. Okay, I I think of course I think. It's supposed to be doing better because like I mentioned before, these model are all tries to optimize the model or fine tune the model on this specific domain task, libre speech task. Okay. So I, 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 my personal thought is that uh, this comparison is not relevant. It's only giving the um, people an idea where their WER are at okay okay robustness and what is interesting to me is that they start to challenge the commercial speech recognition service vendors uh, they're comparing their results on different database these are the names of databases and the, these four are the companies I checked your paper. They didn't mention the company's name, but there, I, you can see that uh, Whisper is doing better than different companies uh, most of the time. Um, you can see the Whisper is the dark blue, and the, these are the four companies. These are the four. Yeah, I don't want to draw this, but you can see that the four companies are roughly at the same range. Uh, way worse than the whisper model. Again, this is not a fair again. Okay, I'm not. Um, I haven't not collected money from, for example, Amazon, uh, Google. No, I don't want to say this because that makes you think this is Amazon. The four companies are uh, using the alphabetical order. I think that be could be Amazon Transcribe and uh. Google's speech API and the Microsoft uh, speech API. These the three they have, I think, according to my guessing, is the three companies they must. Uh, there must be three in the four. Okay, I think the, the first one might be Nuance, IBM. But you know the IBM and Nuance are the same thing, okay? IBM and Nuance, they, they use the technology. IBM, I think IBM uses the Nuance technology. And the non-Nuance is the Microsoft, one part of Microsoft. So I really don't know what's the fourth company, okay, it could be. But this is unfair. Why? The thing is, the model the models which are being deployed in those companies server are different than the whisper model because whisper model is like we call that research model and the this and these four companies model we call that the production model production model you don't you don't just worry about the wer what else do you worry about First of all, I know that, that these other companies, the other things, the other companies the API, they are streaming. They're streaming ASR. So as long as you speak, the recognition result comes out. The whisper model is not a streaming model. This is not a streaming model. Okay, not a streaming model. These these four companies, they are streaming model. Usually, a streaming model is uh, at least a ten percent or worse than the uh, non-streaming model because you cannot check the future okay you can only look at the history so it uh, hurts your inference capability the second thing is that besides wer even you're doing non-streaming asr okay you care about something called a real-time factor how fast you can decode one second of speech for most of these companies my model they have a 
Do you, want, do you want to squeeze the model size, squeeze the model size, so the model can run faster and faster? So they do, do make a balance trade-off between the WR and RTF. Accuracy and the speed. This is the trade-off the speech researcher or speech engineers are facing every day. How do you ba balance them to th these two? If your speed is very fast, suppose I do not recognize everything. Okay, I only give a yes. I only recognize yes. My RTF real time factor is zero. Okay, but if I want to do the speech recognition plus the online adaptation, then probably the rescoring with a very sophisticated sophisticated RNLM or performer LM, then I will come up with a very large RTF. For example, one second of speech might take uh, 10 seconds to decode, okay? This is not acceptable because it costs too much computational power and the company is not making money, okay? The API doesn't make money, but Whisper AI does not care at the research stage. So it's, I would say this is not fair to compare these results, okay? So I think you might agree with me. If you are trying to com compare the commercial products, okay, it only makes sense to fix the RTF. You say, everybody has to finish the one seconds of audio within 0.1 seconds. Then we talk about the WR difference. Or we say, what's the RTF of different companies can get at the WR of 5%, okay. Um, well, they're talking about the human transcription. I think this is not very making sense to me. Yeah, we'll skip this. Model scaling, data set scaling. Uh, this is some, they did, so they did have done some ablation studies. Um, data set scaling, I think you can read this. Um, the thing is, this is something I have my personal thought about, okay? Uh, you can see lots of time the papers that they have done the data set scaling, for example, they say for the speech data set, the training set, other than using the full thousand hours of data, I use a hundred hour, 10 hour, uh, or even one hour, they get lots of results, but they only get, they get the quantitative, quantitative results. They do not have in-depth analysis about what does that mean when I, when the WR increased 10%. So you really cannot get any rules or guidance from these results, okay? For example, the rules might be, okay, now I want to have my own telephony conversational ASR, okay? You're saying this, I, uh, by doing this type of scaling, you don't need that amount of money. Uh, sorry, that amount of uh, recordings to train my model. But for my, for my task, how many hours of transcribed speech I should collect, right? So to, to achieve a certain WER or to achieve a certain customer satisfaction, okay? But these people, they don't talk about this, okay? I will skip this, uh, multilingual transfer. I think this is also obvious. And they talk about text, text normalization. Um, this is a very engineering, but they're saying that their the normalizer is better than a fair speech normalizer. So, I'm, uh, I do not uh, worry too, bad, too, too much about the text norm because it's always dependent on the customer's requirement, okay? For example, for example, Adidas is wrong, okay? Because the company always wants you to write Adidas with A to be lowercase. So you, you do have to have a lot of human beings to uh, manually craft the rules, right? Okay? There's no way to learn this from the data, I think. So this is a very uh, you know, human labor intensive, I would say. Uh, which is less related to research. Uh, strategies for reliable long-form transcription. I think this section might be interesting because they talk about the strategies. They have done the uh, ablation studies. Um, it's interesting that their beam search is getting, not always getting worse, okay? <laughs> 
supposed to getting worse. Um, but you can see the beam search. This one is getting worse. But this one is getting better. Most time they're getting better. Yeah, which is strange to me. Um, these are some known things, okay? If you are not familiar with this, just Google these names. Okay. Yeah, they have uh, included some related works. But since today's focus is on just this paper, I will skip this. The future works. Yeah, this is what people are many talking about. Uh, the lower resource languages, for example. Um, but I, I think the reason that it's lower resources is because um, people cannot get too much from that. English is mostly widely spoken language and uh, Chinese or Mandarin is also a very well widely spoken language and the European languages very important but lots of business related to that but if you're talking about some other you know uh, languages people may not see the importance of this okay so they are not they're not having a lot of resources because you cannot get too much from it let me quickly go over the uh, appendix that we're done for today or oh, data sets so i think this is the part that this this work is good at and they, they give me a lot of ideas on new databases i even i don't know all the databases especially the what is coral okay um and the uh, lots of the database there are there have a very large duration okay which I would uh, take a look at in the future, okay. okay this is a very good data sets. And the most of the data sets are open for download and you can use them for free for research purpose. And that you have some pre-trained models you can download from the web. Uh, very, very nice pointers. I think uh, kudos to those authors, okay. I think this is a trivial. I think we'll skip this. And this is a long form decoding. They put everything up there over there. Um, multilingual transcription. Yeah, I'm not a very big fan of this. Um P translation, I'm not an expert in this. What is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the last uh, image is very shocking. <laughs> it shows the composition of their training data. You can see that about two thirds are purely English speech recognition with trans uh, English recordings with English trans transcriptions which is a uh, standard and they also have a uh, translation which means you have whatever audio but you have English transcripts or translation okay and they, they have about 20 percent multilingual speech recognition that could be Spanish audio in Spanish text out okay a very very significant amount of work in cracking this um they also did uh, lots of work all right guys what do you think uh thank you for for your patience and uh, again if you like our video please subscribe our channel and share uh, the information with your friends we're on our wave channel and we read latest speech and nlp papers thank you